What's going on guys, Junior here, and today I'm gonna show you how to build this application that you're looking at. And this application is a simple server manager application. So you're gonna replace servers with users, customers, or whatever you want. And we're gonna build this application from the ground up. So we're gonna start with the backend, which is gonna be a Spring Boot API that's gonna be connecting to a MySQL database. And then once we're done building the backend API with Spring Boot, we're gonna start working on the front end where we're gonna be using Angular to build the user interface that you're looking at right now. Maybe in the future, I can use React.js instead of Angular so that I can show you how you can use the same backend and then use React instead of Angular. But today, I'm gonna show you how to do it using Angular in the front end and Spring Boot with MySQL and the backend. Just before we begin, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the application that we're gonna be building. So it's a simple server manager application where we can manage our servers. At the top, you have the manage servers. So that's like the name of the application. And then we have this drop down here where you can filter all the servers that you have. So right now I'm looking at all the servers and I can also filter by server up. And you can see this nice animation where all the servers are filtered. And then at the bottom to the left, you can see there was a message here that tells me that the servers have been filtered. And of course, I can filter by server down. You can see the message again. The servers have been filtered and I'm looking at that one server that is down or the status is down. So let's go back to all servers. And I have another button here that I can click to add a new server. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click here and we have this pop-up window and I'm going to do 192.168.1.62. I think one of the computers uh, on my network is on the 62 and I think this is my desktop. So I'm going to type in desktop and I think it's 64 gig. So I'm going to do 64 gig and let's say home PC. And for now, I'm going to keep the status as down so that we can try to ping the server so that we can see when the status changes. So I'm going to click on add and I can cancel this and then click it again you see that the form is still populated and then I can click on add and you can see that it's saving all right so the server has been added you can see it at the top here and the status is server down so I can click on this ping here so that I can ping the server and what this is gonna do is it's gonna try to open a connection to the server and determine if the server is up and running or if the server is down or if the server is shut down so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button and let this go and you can see that the ping fails. So we weren't able to ping the server. That means that for some reason, the server is down or we can't connect to that server. And I can try to ping a server that is up. So if the server is up and we try to ping the server, but when we're pinging the server, the server is actually down, then you will see that the status will change. So let's try this one because I don't think I have this 21 on my uh, network. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on ping and let this go. You can see that the server is down, so the ping fail, and now the status is server down. And that'll work for all these other ones as well. The behavior is gonna be the same. And if you look at all these IP addresses, you can see that they're all local network IP addresses. So all these IP addresses are in my network, so in my internal network. And I spin up a server on AWS, so I created an EC2 instance on AWS, just so that I could show you that it can also be an external or any IP address on the internet. So let's go ahead and test this external IP address. So I'm going to click on here. I'm going to paste it here because I already have it copied. And then I'm going to say AWS instance. And I think this is 32 gig. And this is a web server. So I set it up as a web server. So I'm going to do web server. And then I'm going to keep the status down. So I can change the status to be up as well. But I'm going to keep it down just so I can show you that I can ping the server and the status is going to change. So I'm going to click on add so that we can save the server. All right, so this is the AWS instance that I have running in AWS. So let's go ahead and ping this server and see what happens. So let's go ahead and ping it. You can see that was really, really fast and the ping was a success and now the status is up. And we can also delete a server. So if we no longer want a server on that list, we can go ahead and just delete it by just clicking on this trash icon here. So if I click this, you can see I have the message server deleted and the server is no longer on the list. And you can also print a report. As you can see here, I have this button in blue on the right. So let's go ahead and click it to generate a report. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. And you can see the server report is down here. I can go ahead and click it to open it. And I'm gonna say yes. And you can see that I have all of the information here. So I can clean this data a little bit so I can select all the pictures and delete them. And delete this one. And let's say I don't need these two delete and then I can put the borders and I can make this a little bigger. You can see that we have all of the servers, the IP address, the name, the memory, and the current status at the time when we print out the report. 
So this application has some functionalities and if you build this application from the ground up, so you build the back end and you build the front end, it's going to give you a very good idea on how these technologies work. When you have Spring Boot in the back end that's communicating with a MySQL server and then you have Angular in the front end where you're doing all these things with the UI when you're using Angular services to make HTTP requests and then you're manipulating the data, you're manipulating the UI and all that. We have a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and get started.